adding browser-level validation. Data quality in an application will improve the earlier you validate. In this regard, it may be preferential to validate data from the browser before you submit the page. Earlier, we did this using a JavaScript library. Now we use a dynamic action. So consider the Manage Products screen again, and perhaps we'd like to ensure that the minimum price is at least zero. So what we need to do is define a dynamic action. Call it minimum price. And it will be on change of the item. And it will be the minimum price item. And the condition can be, well in our case, it will be less than zero. So if the minimum price is less than zero, the dynamic action will fire. And we would like to execute some JavaScript. We don't need to fire on page load, only when the item is being changed. And in this case, we'll just do a simple alert. There are other options out there, such as uh, jQuery alerts and other plugins that can be used for notification. But for simplicity, we use the alert, and it will display this message. In our case, there will no, be no false action. And we can create the dynamic action. We can now demonstrate this. Run the page. Put in a minimum price of 1. And it's all OK. Negative 5. And we get the error message displayed. So we've created a dynamic action here that is nice and simple and yet very effective. And in this whole section, we've created a range of dynamic actions, showing there's usually multiple ways to solve a problem, offering great flexibility. This means it's very easy to create more interactive applications with declarative behavior and some Peel SQL. This concludes our section on dynamic actions. Next up, we'll look at reporting options with Apex.